Mini episode 269 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by TV Howl, your home on the web for coverage of today's television scene and a look at the history of the medium as covered by big time TV critic Adam Buckman. Follow them on the web at tvhowl.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Looking at the National League in terms of breaking this down, Rick Morris and Steve Callis breaking it down for you. National League East. Not a whole lot, again, of a great surprise. You maybe would have expected Washington and Atlanta to be a little bit further out in front uh, at this point, a little closer to 500 than we might have thought. Atlanta with a super hot start. Uh, Washington has been pretty good the entire way. Haven't really kind of broken out yet. And for a team that I picked to win 100 games, I think that could be pretty scary to everybody in that position because they haven't played their best baseball yet. Philadelphia just kind of scuffling along here. Uh, The loss of Roy Halladay uh, after some very – uh, bad outings uh, doesn't really bode well for their uh, short and medium term uh, as a franchise. Uh, the Mets again just kind of scuffling along uh, themselves. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of depth there, but uh, again, uh, Matt Harvey's really emerged already as one of the best pitchers in baseball. Notice I'm not saying one of the best young pitchers. Uh, he, he's he's leaping up into the conversation with some of the some of the big dogs here, and then Miami again. The only difference between this year and last year is this year they were expected to be bad, and they're living up to it. So uh, what do you think when you look at the East, uh, Steve? Uh, there, there are some very, very good teams, I think, especially in the one and two positions here. Well, I thought, as we discussed before the season, Washington and Atlanta would be two teams in the playoffs coming out of that division. And you're right. They have both gotten into a little slump now. Um, Strasburg has not been good. He's been okay, but not good. He's 2-5. and five. He's up to point eight three ERA. Uh, Atlanta has a very good team, and I think they're going to separate now. Atlanta's five games in front of Philly, Washington three games in front of Philly after 40 games, 41 games. That's not a gigantic league, but that's not a small league. Uh, now I watch the Mets all the time. I think Harvey is the best young pitcher in baseball. It depends if you call Kershaw young at 25, I think he is. But um, I've watched all the Harvey starts. He's off the charts. We might talk about him in another segment when we do your 30 top players. But mm-hmm. Harvey goes to the top of the list in pitchers. If you're going to do a top three, a top five list for this season alone, he's definitely on it. He's 5-0. and um, And this is with pitching a, as you know, an infield hit. 28 batters, nine innings, and getting a no decision, and he's five and up. So mm-hmm. <laughs> he's been unbelievable. But the Mets are going nowhere. Um, you know, they're trying to stay relevant. They can't. Miami is, once again, a disgrace down there, what they've done. Uh, they went for it last year, and so after one year, they blew it all up. And, you know, now they're going, for sure, nowhere. Philly's kind of up and down. You know, they do have Howard and Utley back, but I don't know if they have enough uh, pitching wise. So I think it's going to be, even though it is kind of close now. It's kind of kind of be the way it is. Atlanta and Washington both making the playoffs. The Mets and Miami with no chance. And Philly, I don't think they can make a run, but they do have experience and they have won in the past. And again, they do have the right side of the infield, which you'll recall they did not have last year for a large part of the season. Mm-hmm. One or the other or both were out for a whole lot. So I think the analysis is correct. It's kind of what we thought. And I think that's going to broaden the uh, space between Atlanta, Washington, and the West. You know, when we do this again in you know another 40 games or something. Sure. I mean, uh, Chase Utley looking uh, better than he has really the last couple of years. With that knee, you never know how long he's going to hold up. But I'm glad to see it personally. I've always been a big uh, Chase Utley guy, uh, much like uh, Mac on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I've always uh, admired him, uh, certainly. Uh, So I'm glad to see him back and playing well. I thought Philly would get the second wild card spot. I really did. I thought it was going to be tight. I thought they'd find a way. That was, again, I I was assuming that Roy Halladay wasn't going to fall off further from last year, which he did, dramatically so, and and we find out why now uh, with having to have, uh, uh, you know, the the, the time that he's going to miss due to the uh, rotator cuff issues. Uh, And, uh, again, they're now thinking he may be back a little bit quicker than they anticipated, so we'll see about that. But uh, Washington... They just looked like the best team in baseball coming into the season to me in, in terms of starting pitching, uh, you know, top to bottom, really, when you look at it one through five. You mentioned Strasburg as being somebody who uh, hasn't pitched very well. I can unfortunately say 
or for the sake of my uh, non-keeper league fantasy team, Gio Gonzalez uh, has not been giving me all that I might have wanted selfishly to this point in the season. Uh, but again, starting pitching, bullpen, and starting lineup, nobody in baseball, at least on paper, I think stacks up with, with, with Washington, and bullpen especially. I mean, that's what makes them a very, very special team, adding Soriano to that bullpen, uh, the chance that, again, it, you don't have, even have to have lights out starting pitching, but you know if you have a lead after six innings, it's awfully tough to come back on Washington, maybe tougher than any team in baseball with the way they can go seventh inning, eighth inning, ninth inning on you with, uh, with those three guys. Well, you have to give Soriano a lot of credit. You know He got paid closer money to be the eighth inning guy in New York, and then Rivera had that bad fall, and he was unbelievable. Everybody said, oh, what are the Yankees going to do without Mariano? Soriano was Mariano last year. Yes. And this year, and, and I failed to mention in the Yankee analysis, Mariano back 16 for 16 in saves off the charts. But Soriano, to me, is exactly what Washington needed to put them over the top. And I agree with you. And, again, it's still early, but I still think Washington is going to get it together and be the dominant team. I did not pick Philly for the second wild card. I picked the Giants, I think, after they were going to lose to the Dodgers, and I'm sure we'll get to that in a little bit. But, yeah, I think Soriano is, from a winning the World Series perspective, the biggest, most important pickup that any team made in the offseason. I and think so. And I he was lights out last year in New York. Well, think about what it's going to be in October. When you get to those situations where every at-bat matters, especially in the late innings with, with, with Clifford and, and, and Storin and Soriano, that, that – how, how many teams can, can bring anything like that? I mean, the teams that come to mind in the recent history of baseball, uh, I, I, I sometimes talk about this with people. Hey, remember the Yankees in 96 when Rivera was the setup guy and Wettel right. was there in the ninth inning? That's right. Washington goes 7 8 9. Nobody does that, Steve. No, and I think that, and, and again, that's why we picked them to get to the World Series. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're proving that they're legit. Uh, Atlanta, after the fast start, clearly not as good as they looked at that point. Few teams are, you know, as good as they looked at that point, but they, they look legit. They look like they could be in it all year long. We'll get to the uh, aforementioned Giants here in a moment, but moving down into the Central, and I talked about this with, with, with Texas and the American League West, teams that, again, you look at them, you just have a tendency to kind of underestimate coming into this season. Uh, but, but, boy, with what they have uh, come out and done thus far, at this point and without anything at this point from Oscar Tavares who you look at them and he has a chance to potentially be the next uh, franchise player for that team uh, but another guy that you could put in that uh, conversation Shelby Miller as a pitcher finally getting an opportunity after the last couple of years looking like he was on the cusp like they could have put him in there Shelby Miller Adam Wainwright heck of a one-two punch in whatever order you want to call it St. Louis up there Cincinnati we expected to be up there and playing very well and they have been uh, Pittsburgh at at least the fringe of contention uh, in the division here. They're pretty close at the moment, uh, and, and certainly for the second wild card spot. Uh, the Cubs in Milwaukee you expected to be further back, and, and they were. The Cubs may be further back than Milwaukee, which they're not at the moment, uh, which is kind of surprising. Maybe we would have expected a little bit more from Milwaukee, especially knowing how well Kyle Loesch was going to pitch had we known that. But again, St. Louis and Cincinnati, this looks like it's going to be a classic duel all the way down the stretch here. And it certainly looks like the safety net of one of the wild card spots uh, awaits the loser, Steve. Well, I, I wrote off St. Louis because of the Carpenter. And yeah. I, I wrote Wainwright could come back good. I knew about Miller. Obviously, he was dominant in that one hitter. And I guess we should mention the dominance of the pitchers in a lot of these things. It seemed to be a one hitter, at least one every week. I think that yeah. one weekend there were three, and that was a few days after Harvey had thrown his one hitter. So it's very interesting how sometimes in the modern game, now again, no steroid era, but how sometimes a pitcher can dominate. But I based my selection of them to be second in the division and to pick Cincinnati solely on Chris Carpenter. Can St. Louis do this the whole year? Well, you know, Yadier Molina hitting 333. I understand how good he is, but he's the complete Molina, if you will, offensively and defensively. Beltran, since he left the Mets, had a new lease on life this year, 309, 10 home runs, 27 RBIs. I mean, Beltran, when healthy, I think a lot of the part of the problem with Mets is he was not healthy. He's an unbelievable uh, hitter, but I think that when you look at the Cardinals, what you look at, and you alluded to it, is experience and World Series winning, and you see these guys who are showing up every day, you know, Matt Holliday, for example. These guys know how to win. Uh, 
Freeze, who we forget all about, even though he's having a bad season now. He's a guy who can turn it up. A guy like Descalzo is a very good player. He has to play better. But they do have depth. They do have a very good team. And, yes, with guys like uh, Miller and even a Jake Westbrook, who can be very good, uh, I think they can make a lot of noise. I'm still sticking with Cincinnati to win the division. And I'm going to stay with my pick because I picked them. You know, I don't want to back off picks after 40 games. But I certainly did pick, as I said, the Cincinnati Reds to win this division and the St. Louis Cardinals to be second, but not to make the playoffs. Yeah, I'm going to stick with you on uh, Cincinnati. I picked them as well. Uh, and anytime you got a team, and I saw a lot of preseason picks, uh, maybe people falling in love with the uh, the Midwest motif here, and uh, there were some old-school World Series, I think uh, maybe back around 1940 or so, where it was Detroit and Cincinnati. I can't remember the exact years, but you, you saw a lot of that of where people were picking them. Cincinnati, okay, I'm not going to put the combo of Joey Votto and Johnny Cueto up there necessarily with Verlander and Cabrera, but anytime you have a dominant number one pitcher and one of the best hitters in baseball, one of the very few uh, best uh, hitters in baseball, you've really got something right there in Cincinnati. Uh, it's interesting that Shinsu Chu hasn't uh, cost them more games defensively at this point. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, uh, kind of wondered how that would work with uh, jamming him into center field in that lineup, but his yeah. bat uh, has been uh, truly amazing. And, yeah, uh, Cincinnati still looks like a potential World Series team, to be sure. Well, I think they have two MVP ca candidates this year. Votto went through 40 games. Shin Su Chu, you have to give him credit, 322 more impressively than me, a 468 OP OBP. Uh, 1.052 when you combine them, OPS. I mean, those are video game numbers, nine home runs, 19 RBIs. Votto hitting 325 with a 456 on base percentage. When you put those two guys together, look, they're almost on half the time. That's unheard of in Major League nowadays. So do I think Shin Su Chu is going to do that all year? I don't, but he's been incredible. And do I think Joey Votto's going to do it all year? I do, because Votto now is a perennial MVP candidate who is, in my book, maybe a quiet superstar because he plays in Cincinnati, but he's a superstar. So I still think they're going to win. Um, and But I think right now that one-two punch uh, is very formidable and one of the best in terms of playing this year, arguably the best in Major League Baseball. And before we depart the Central here, in terms of franchise players, you t a name that you mentioned with St. Louis, and I'm not – this is not any kind of exact comparison or whatever, but you mentioned Carlos Beltran, and, and I think of you know defense, but you know speed and power, that, that kind of rare combo. Yep. You look in Pittsburgh with Andrew McCutcheon out there uh, in the outfield, and, and, and again, that is a guy that is a franchise player, uh, one of the few in baseball that is uh, capable of, of helping to keep a team afloat. You know, we talk about Robinson Cano, what he's done with the Yankees thus far. McCutcheon has the same kind of uh, role with Pittsburgh in, in trying to help keep them afloat. Uh, and uh, I, I've joked about this in recent years. One more reason for Cleveland people to hate Pittsburgh because McCutcheon has become what we in Cleveland always wanted and, and thought Grady Sizemore would become. But, but this guy, this, this freak with the physical tools, you saw what he did last year when he was the hottest player in baseball in the middle of the summer. He's a big part of the reason that the Pirates are well above 500 at this point. I think McCutcheon was an MVP candidate last year, of course, and I think he's a star player now. I think they just don't have enough. The Russell Martin thing, you're correct. They did sign him away from the Yankees, who didn't want to pay all that money. It hasn't panned out well for him. A.J. Burnett has been uh, great at times for Pittsburgh. I just don't think they have enough left to go with the uh, top two. No, nor do I. Uh, look, looking at the West, again, if you said San Francisco was uh, going to make the playoffs, and you did, kudos to you. Because, again, and I just I just find myself scratching my head year after year uh, because I, I just keep looking at that lineup. Now, Hunter Pence is looking a little bit more like he used to look. So, the, and, and this is, uh, I, I think that uh, Pablo Sandoval is, is sort of uh, the Brett Saberhagen of, of this decade as far as every <laughs> other year. So there are some things that make it a bit more explicable. And uh, Buster Posey is one of the, the best and most valuable players in baseball, as we saw last year. Uh, with his designation as such. Not a lot of surprise in the division, aside from the fact that Colorado went on that big hot streak earlier, but they've kind of come back to earth. But much like in uh, the American League East, where it's a story of the big good surprise and the big bad surprise, and again, you know, Bruce Bochy and all those guys might say, hey, look, two World Series wins in three years, are we that big of a surprise? Okay, fair enough. I don't have to understand how you're doing it 
although their pitching is always great. But Matt Cain hasn't been himself this year. So even that, I think I'm still entitled to say doing it with mirrors to an extent because they're not even running on all cylinders. It, it kind of makes it scary. And, and that's the thing. They won the World Series both years without running on all cylinders. Without uh, Barry Zito was horrible in 2010. You go on down the list here, and San Francisco at times looks like they're doing it with one arm tied behind their back, w which is frightening as well as confusing. But the Dodgers, who have every advantage, I I'd say more so even than the Angels and the Blue Jays that we talked about before. The Dodgers, okay, you lose Zach Granke, your, your, your number two pitcher, who would be number one on a fair number of teams, but uh, nobody's going to be number one except for Clayton Kershaw when, when he's on a staff. You go on down the list here. You talked about Matt Kemp earlier and uh, injury uh, potential here and him not being uh, at, at, at full strength. That's a guy in my book. You can make a, a, a good case for him being the best hitter in baseball when healthy. We just haven't seen it. Hanley Ramirez goes down. So we've seen issues of health here, but more than anything else, underachievement. These Dodgers should not be below 500. I happen to think Don Mattingly is a pretty good manager, but regardless of what I think, that dude is getting canned after this season uh, if things don't get much better uh, th than they have been. I, uh, the, the, the minimum for this guy to keep his job has got to be uh, 90 to 92 wins, minimum. Yeah, I think he's in trouble. I think Mattingly is a good uh, manager as well. But the Dodgers are kind of a mystery. Now, Granke came back and pitched well the other day, and you always have to go back to pitching. And I guess if you have to look at that division, when you look at the pitching, you're going to look at the Giants. The, the, the ace of the staff now is Madison Bumgarner. Yes. Four and one. A whip under one, you know, mm -hmm. Harvey's is better. That's how good Matt Harvey the Mets is. But a whip under one in today's game is virtually unheard of. 2.18 ERA. So they do have Lincecum, who's been okay. But when you look at those names, Zito and Kane and Lincecum and Bumgarner, I don't think you could throw them out. The knock on the Giants, I thought, is just like after they won in 2010, they did nothing for the 2011 season, and then Posey got hurt. So they won in 2012, and now they really didn't do much. I guess they signed Scudero. But they really didn't go out and get anybody who they didn't have last year. So I think people were looking for the same negative bounce, if you will, um, that happened in 2011. I picked them to be the wild card. I still think the Dodgers can turn it around. Uh, again, on the one hand, it's only 40 games. On the other hand, it looks a little early out here. You know, that mm -hmm. old Yogi Berra expression. But I think the problem with the Dodgers, Matt Kemp only won home run. But I did hear an interview with him the other day. You know, he did have that shoulder surgery. And I'm of a new believer in the last five or ten years years where you look at these big hitters who have a, a, a wrist especially but a shoulder surgery as well they just can't seem to generate the power and Kemp's hitting 282 that's not bad that's but that's not Matt Kemp but he only has one home run in 39 games and he's got 39 strikeouts in 39 games so that's uh, he's just not literally hitting the ball and when he is hitting the ball he's not hitting the ball for power so that has to mean something and it could just be a weakened shoulder that's not 100% yet. It could be like a wrist maybe in a month or two. The weather warms up. You're looser, et cetera. But he's the, he's the offensive player who has to turn it around. And, yeah, Hanley Ramirez, up and down, an incredibly talented player, hurt again, mm -hmm. but clearly wants to play for the Dodgers, I think. And if he gets back healthy, I still think they can make a run. Yeah, I think they can as well. And uh, they can get some pretty good production here, as has been seen out of Adrian Gonzalez. So you're still looking at a potentially deadly middle of that lineup uh, when healthy. So, uh, again, my, my preseason pick was uh, Washington over uh, the L.A. Angels in the World Series. Uh, I would not at this point say that the Angels are going to win the, uh, the American League, much less even make the playoffs. Of course, I had them playing Toronto in the American League Championship Series, as did a fair number of people. So, really, Detroit's got to be feeling pretty good. Detroit's the only real front runner in the American League that's uh, playing up to snuff as far as how that goes. I still... So I'm kind of confused as far as the American League goes. I guess if you put a gun to my head at this point, I'd say I probably like Detroit more than anybody else. Certainly like Washington still coming out of the uh, the National League. Have you seen uh, too much to change your thoughts thus far, Steve? Uh, well, not really, but I also like the Angels in Washington. But uh, a little note of caution with Detroit now. Verland has been terrible his last two starts, mm -hmm. highly unusual. Now 4-4, four and four, but knocked around. I think he gave up eight earned runs the other day in two and two-thirds innings, which is mm -hmm. unheard of for Verlander. Uh, but I think what we learn once again, what you learn every year, is it always comes back to the pitching. And I think, obviously, Verland is going to have to get healthy. And I don't know when Jared Weaver's coming back for the Angels. It doesn't. They're in much worse shape to me than the Dodgers. Um, 
They're 15 and 26, and they're the Angels are eight and a half games out. As bad as the Dodgers are, they're only six games out. San Francisco 24 and 17, the Dodgers 17 and 22. And again, I think Kemp, I think Matt Kemp is going to get healthy. Granky did come back and pitch well the other day, so they're having things going their way. That's a positive. I don't know what the Angels have going for them. That's a positive. No, it's it's awfully hard to identify what that could possibly be but that's our look at uh, both the american league and now uh, the national league for early season uh, 2013 as we bring the show to a close we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to nbc cbs abc fox all clear channel affiliates tnt tbs usa upn deadspin.com youtube.com ytmnd.com myspace.com various blogs fox news cnn cnbc msnbc iamboard.com billboard.com google.com espn espn2 espn news espn classic NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio, Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Paper Mate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, the Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse and the Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements.